In this episode, let's look at how to figure out which mics will work with your camera or audio recorder. For those of you that are just getting started with recording higher quality audio for your video, rather than just using the inbuilt microphone on your camera, a lot of times the question comes up, will this mic work with my camera or my audio recorder? Let's look at a couple of things you need to look at to figure that out. Now, the two main things you need to look at are, first of all, the plug or connector type and the power requirement of their microphone. Almost all microphones, not 100%, but a lot of the microphones you're gonna use for video are what are called condenser microphones, and they will need some sort of power. The first category of plugs and cables that you'll see are 3.5 millimeter plugs. These come in a variety of formats. They come in TS, TRS, and TRRS. First are TS 3.5 millimeter plugs. These plugs are meant for recording into a camera or an audio recorder, and they have a couple of things that you need to consider. First of all, they record to one channel on a stereo recorder or camera. That means that sound, when you play it back, will only come out of one speaker, usually the left speaker. That's not necessarily a problem. You can fix that in editing by following our video instructions here. On the plus side, relative to microphones that record to both the left and right channel, these tend to be a little bit more sensitive, not in 100% of cases, but oftentimes. The next type is a TRS connector, 3.5 millimeter. These are meant for recording also into cameras or audio recorders. And these actually record the same thing to both the left and the right channel so that when you play it back, it comes out of both speakers. The only downside to these is potentially, again, not in 100% of cases, but the output signal may, may be a little bit less than a TS microphone. And then finally, we have TRRS plugs. These are meant for recording into smartphones, to tablets, and to some of the newer computers out there that have microphone headset combo inputs. Now, the cables that come along with 3.5 millimeter plugs are unbalanced. What that means in practical terms is that they're more susceptible to picking up noise and interference from electromagnetic sources, from radio sources, or from electric power. In practical terms, what that means is you're probably not gonna wanna use really long extensions for these types of mics because you increase the chances of picking up noise. On the other hand, XLR plugs and cables are the more professional type. They are balanced, which means that you can run longer runs or longer extensions of these types of cables without the risk of picking up as much noise or electromagnetic interference or interference from power cables. So from that respect, they're actually used a lot more often in professional applications so that you don't run into those types of issues. Now, XLR-based mics and cables are more expensive, but they are more durable and they are more robust in most situations. So that's typically why professionals will use these under most circumstances. So the first question I often get is, well, can you just adapt? So if you have an XLR microphone, can you just adapt it to 3.5 millimeter and run it directly into your camera? And the answer is, in some cases, yes, you can do that. I generally recommend to avoid doing that and rather try to get a microphone that's actually going to work without an adapter in the majority of cases where you're gonna be using it for the types of recording applications you're gonna be doing. The biggest reason I recommend that is that there are also power requirements for microphones. So let's talk about that. There are three general categories of power that you can provide to a condenser microphone. And again, condenser microphones are gonna include lavaliers, shotgun microphones, small diaphragm condensers, all the types of microphones we typically use for video. The first is phantom power. This is typically 48 volts, and it's typically provided by the recorder or preamplifier that you're plugging into, or the camera if you're doing that. The second category is plug-in or bias power. This is more common for mics with 3.5 millimeter connectors, typically lavalier microphones, but also sometimes shotgun microphones that are made to plug directly into your camera with a 3.5 millimeter input. Plug-in power is three to five volts. You can see already it's different than phantom power. Phantom power is a much higher voltage. What you don't want to attempt is to take a 3.5 millimeter plug mic, adapt it with an XLR adapter, and then plug it into a recorder and provide 48 volts phantom power. There is a very good likelihood that you will fry your microphone if you try that. And that's one of the most important things to understand that I think a lot of people that are first getting into audio don't understand. And so <laughs> as, your, as friends, I wanted to tell you that up front so that you don't run into that situation and accidentally fry your mic. There are also mics that, in the third category, self-power. That is, they have some sort of battery in the mic itself. You'll get see this in things like the Rode VideoMic Pro. You'll see it in some lavalier microphones like the Audio-Technica ATR3350. And also in some XLR-based mics like the Rode NTG2 and the Rode NTG4 Plus. 
Now, there's another category of mics that aren't used quite as often in video, and those are called dynamic mics. They don't require power, and they're typically used for voiceover and things of that nature. The nice advantage of dynamic mics is they tend to be very good at not picking up a lot of room ambiance. So a lot of times people like to use those for voiceover in rooms that are not acoustically treated, and they just get rid of some of that echo reverb and some of that unpleasantness that comes when you're recording, typically in a home or rooms that, again, are just not really designed for audio recording. Downsides with this type of microphone are that, while it doesn't require any sort of power, they typically require a lot of gain from your audio recorder or camera. So a lot of times your camera isn't gonna have enough gain for, for these unless you're using a, a very expensive professional camera. So typically you're going to need to use some other kind of recorder that can handle that. For example, I have a Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. That's sort of the classic microphone that you're used to seeing. Rock bands use them a lot. Live performance, they're used a lot. It doesn't require power, but it does require a lot of gain. So for example, with my Tascam DR60D Mark II, I have to at least set it to mid gain with the fader set all the way to max, or I have to go to high gain and fine tune the fader from there. If you plug this type of mic into your camera, chances are you're not gonna get a strong enough signal that'll really produce really satisfying high quality audio. Now again, as I mentioned, there are a number of adapters available for the various types of microphones to go from 3.5 millimeter to XLR, um, XLR to 3.5 millimeter. Be careful with those and make sure you understand the power requirements of your microphone. You don't want to fry your microphone. There are some cases where it can work to adapt these if you get the power requirements right. For example, a few weeks ago, we reviewed the Rode NTG4 Plus shotgun microphone, which can power itself. It has an inbuilt battery. You can turn that battery on and then use an XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter to feed that into your camera. And that'll work fine because, again, the camera is just providing plug-in power, which is a lower voltage than what the mic is powering itself with with its inbuilt battery. So you're not going to fry the mic in that circumstance. Now, one of the most important factors for getting good quality sound is getting the microphone as close as possible to your talent. Usually you wanna be within 18 to 24 inches for a shotgun or a boom mic. For a lavalier, obviously you're gonna to wanna to have them wearing the lavalier. And if you can do that, that will greatly improve the sound of your video. However, a lot of these lavalier mics with 3.5 millimeter connectors only come with cables that are maybe 1.5 meters long. So that's not gonna be enough to reach your camera in most cases. What you may need to do in that case is to use an extension cable like the Rode VC1, which actually will extend the cable by 10 feet. And I wouldn't go a whole lot longer than that because again, this is an unbalanced cable. So there is a risk that you're going to introduce noise of various sorts. So I hope you found that helpful. Go ahead and leave any questions you have down below. And thanks for checking out this episode. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.